I really do think that there's something powerful about like beginning something like an Abrahamic hospitality, like different practices. Um, yeah. How would you guys encourage somebody who might be wanting just to get started? What, what's sort of like the training wheels version of starting to show hospitality? I will, I'll jump in and, and I, I think it actually, it starts with using your table in general. I think the average American family doesn't eat hardly any meals around the table. And so mm. I think you have to start there. You have to value the table enough to do it yourself. And then, uh, you have something to invite other people into. So we've been really fighting as a family over the last probably five or six years and are currently in a season where by God's grace, we're eating three meals a day around the table with our kids, which is unheard of. And we never actually thought we would get here, even like with work schedules and all of that stuff. And it's been amazing. Um, but I think what it's done too, is it's totally changed our perspective of food, of the table, of how we use that space. Uh, and we're already cultivating faith conversations and stuff with the kids and memorizing Bible verses or, you know, doing Shabbat stuff on Friday, whatever it is. And I think then you're building the foundational elements of something you can invite others into. And then for us, the next stepping stone was inviting people to join us for Shabbat on Friday, you know, and it's like one or two people um, and things like that. But yeah, Phil, what comes to mind for you? Yeah, I, I think the I don't even think about the fact that the table that is like a huge issue. I guess that like we we've also we've tried to be really intentional to use our table for our family first, right? Like to as many meals as we can. Like let's be intentional with the table. I didn't even think about the fact that like a lot of I, it's so it is normal. Just you just go out to eat or you eat in front of the TV. Like it's a very like our culture. Those things are so normal, right? The table might not even be very normal. So that's a good first one. I think second, it's like good to address the fears that might exist, right? So one fear might be like, I, well, I can't cook. Maybe you have a husband or wife, they don't really cook, right? Um, or they're not, or they're insecure about what they might make themselves. So I think make stuff easy off the off the gate, right? Like just, yes, use your table, order order food in, right? So don't, don't, don't put this pressure on yourself to have to cook some kind of elaborate meal. Make it as easy as it has to be as far as like preparation goes. And then the, the people that you bring in, I think pick the easiest people first, right? Test it with the easiest people, that, whether that's some people, the family is actually not the easiest, right? Like their in-laws might be the hard people to invite to the dinner, right? So, um, so start with the ones that are the easiest, whether that's like your, you know, your friends or if it is your kids, right? Or, um, or maybe it is like for us, like we, we try to be really attentive with our, you know, both my, um, we're just so fortunate to have both sets of grandparents, like within 15 minutes of us. So we are trying to pull them in all the time. So they're the easiest people for us, um. So I think finding, yeah, find your like your easiest people and don't put pressure on yourself to have to cook some elaborate thing um, and make it easy on yourself on cleanup too. like use disposable stuff like very practically. I know people can kind of get anxious about a lot of these things. Well, there's going to be a big mess or I'm going to I don't know how to cook very well or who do I am. So I think just addressing some of the fears and kind of like expounding some of like expounding. It's not the right word. Expelling some of those fears out the gate would really help take some baby steps, you know? Yeah. Well, I wanted to hear too, Phil, you describe a little bit about what it looks like to teach at the table. Cause I know that for me, that was, that was a big barrier because I, I was so used to, like I was saying, teaching is something that happens in a church building. And so to me, it was a lot more comfortable standing in front of a hundred, you know, hyped up middle schoolers and giving them a lesson than standing in front of my family and starting to do any kind of intentional teaching or discussion like that that was that was just a just fell out of place very awkward like am i yeah feels like i'm doing something that i shouldn't be doing again because it just i, I was it wasn't that we, we weren't experiencing that um i experienced a ton of that growing up but it was it was really centered in the church and so it was really weird to bring it into the house um i remember you know i had this experience a couple of years ago when we were in israel when we take groups over to israel we always go to a orthodox family's shabbat dinner and we were at the Shabbat dinner with this guy. He's probably 35 years old. Um, and he was hosting. And it was like incredibly complex dinner time because it was, he had like about 30 guests from America. That was our group. And then he had his whole family. His mom was there. His sister was there with her whole family. It was like, so it was like, wow. it was like 10 to 12 people from his family, 30 people. And this guy stood in front of the Shabbat table and he 
led and taught and there was singing and there was like discussion and there was teaching and it was all interwoven. I was just like, it was like a clinic for how to lead a table. And I could tell this wow. guy clearly has a multi-gen, like he, he's been a part of a tradition that has learned how to really lead a table time um, in, in a way that I've never even experienced. And I was so blessed by it. And I've been, you know, I practice this on a weekly basis with my family. Like, okay, wh what can we do? And it, it's, for me, it's always like a process of trying to get better at this thing. Um, and anytime I walk into somebody's house and I see how they do it, because there's, there's not one perfect way to do it. There's, there's a ton of ways to do this. I'm just so inspired. So like, yeah, take us inside of, you know, the, the Goodwin house, you know, we're all sitting there like, how, how do you, how do you, how do you lead people into any kind of like teaching or, you know, intentional time? Yeah. yeah. Well, first off, I think the scariest, I don't know the scariest right word. The most uncomfortable for me is actually when it's just my family. If it's like me, my wife, my three kids, that's the most uncomfortable situation for me to teach in. And I feel the most out of water, like a fish out of water feeling of that. When we bring in people who like are, they've never experienced a Shabbat before, or if we're doing a, um, if we're doing like a Passover celebration, right? Or we're doing like, we're kind of meeting together during Sukkot. That feels easier to me because there's kind of like, there's yeah. kind of stuff and topics that we're specifically addressing. I've looked at these topics a lot. I've read these things a lot. In Passover, we have a Haggadah. We have a booklet we're going through. It's just an easier time to teach. Yeah. The every Friday night, like hangout time, it's very short. It, anything teachy is kind of very short. And it's mm -hmm. definitely like a, all right, I don't really know what I'm doing every week, right? Um, but when we normally start with, we try to keep it easy and we just sing the Shabbat Shalom song every Friday. So the two, the two word Shabbat Shalom song <laughs> yes. and my kids like kick it off for us. And I always say, I told my oldest, I'm like, all right, Finn, let's go like start it up. And we, we like, bang the table and we start that off. And so anybody who's like joining us and never been a part of it, it's super easy to learn. Right. And it's just kind of a fun, like loose way to get everybody around the table and like kick it off. So that's as far as like very practically. So I'd try to kick it off with the, with the song. Cause it's just. It's easy. Um, and then my wife lights some candles to make way for like a nice candle at dinner. And then normally I kind of address like stuff about Shabbat to remind us, right? Like, all right, we we do this to remind ourselves that we are, you know, we're working from a place of rest. This is the reset time of the week instead of the other way around where we're just working to get to this day. This is actually the first day that kind of sets us up for, you know, what's to come next week. And so just trying to teach a little bit about that. And if people are totally unfamiliar with anything kind of like, rooted in kind of Old Testament, you know, history of around like a Shabbat or a feast. We talk about, you know, the moon. This is why we kind of celebrate this stuff when the sun goes down. You know, we talk about, you know, creation and Genesis one. Um, so those those are kind of like the basic sort of stuff we hit on. And then we normally, you know, talk about Jesus and body and blood. We do like communion together every Friday. Um, so we kind of make that a part of our like our Shabbat before we actually dive into eating like the the, the bulk of the meal with, you know, all the mains and the sides and stuff. Um, so that's kind of the, the practicals of how it works. 